This is the Equimeter, patented in 1959 by H. Joseph Gerber. I've never seen a real one, so I made my own. Click on the link down there to print out your own. It has two transparent overlays. This is the curve sheet. It has this curve up here and nine marked indicators down here. And this is the scale sheet. It has just a line up here and a logarithmic scale on the bottom. It also has a collection of worksheets. Get yourself a graph of some curve. You lay these things down on top of it. You do some simple tricks on the worksheet and the thing finds the equation of your curve. The equimeter, it's a pretty amazing little device. This comes from an era when most of the world's data was graphical. You had machines that could measure things, but they didn't use memory to store their data. They would just immediately record the data on paper. All kinds of machines and scientific instruments would give you output that looked like this. H. Joseph Gerber was an inventor and an entrepreneur who had a bunch of ideas when he was still a student in the 1940s. I actually consider myself a bit of a Gerber enthusiast. I already did a video about his flagship product, the Gerber Variable Scale, which was a kind of stretchable ruler. I'm such a Gerber fan, I actually read the book, The Inventor's Dilemma, The Remarkable Life of H. Joseph Gerber, written by his son, David Gerber. When I read the book, I discovered an invention that I didn't even know existed, the equimeter. Mathematically speaking, this is much more ambitious than his other graphical instruments. It doesn't just measure individual features of the curve, like the variable scale. No, the equimeter takes a bunch of measurements and actually tells you the equation of the curve. In principle, then, you could use this to answer any possible mathematical question about the data. See, when you have data on a page, it usually only represents a portion of what you're really looking at. Knowing an equation would allow you to predict the data values beyond where you measured. This is more or less the whole reason that we use equations or mathematics at all in the sciences. I should probably come clean and tell you that I'm not sure how you're supposed to pronounce this word. It's a device for measuring the equation of a curve on paper. So that equa, equa is for equation. So could it be equameter? It's not really a good name. Maybe it sounded better to Joe. I actually tried to contact his son, David Gerber, and ask him how it's pronounced. I wrote him an email, but I'm not sure I had the right address. I was so desperate, I tweeted at him. This is a big step for me. I've only ever sent three tweets. One was to the Victor Company. One was to my state senator for disrespecting mathematics. And one was to David Gerber. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for compelling tweets about once every 18 months. I'm still waiting to hear back, so in the meantime, I'm sticking with Equimeter. Gerber's equimeter is built to deduce polynomial equations, which sort of go up and down with a few wobbles like this, or combinations of trig functions, which wobble around forever like this. It's pretty easy to use. Let's just try an example. Here's a piece of a graph that I printed out with my computer. Now, I already know the equation of this graph, but just for fun, let's use the equimeter to try and measure it. Actually, I wrote the equation right down there at the bottom, and I folded it over. Don't pee. Go. I just said the first step is important. You got to look at the curve and guess vaguely what kind of equation you think you're looking for. This one I'm going with polynomial and actually you have to decide the degree. If you know anything about polynomials, this one looks like a degree three. So go find the worksheet for degree three polynomial. The worksheet tells me to focus on the values at x equals zero, one, two, and three. So I marked those points off on my graph. All right, here's what we do. The first point is x equals zero. You lay your graph down on the table and then you lay the curve sheet down right on top of it so that the curve up there hits that point. And then you lay the scale sheet down so that this vertical line hits that point. That vertical line, that's called the hairline. Now, once you got this all lined up, the letters down there will indicate values on the scale at the bottom. And these are the values that you're gonna fill in on the worksheet. So the A value here is three. So over on the worksheet, I fill in three where it says A. Now you gotta fill in extra zeros here. So I'm gonna write three, zero, zero. The C indicator is at a nine. So I put nine in the boxes by C. The F is at 18. So I fill in one, eight, zero at the F. Now on the scales, some digits have a little dotted line under them. That's a reminder to put that digit in the dotted box. 
Otherwise, you always start in the leftmost solid box. Anyway, you fill in all those values, and that's it for x equals 0. Now you move everything over to x equal 1, look up those numbers, and fill in those boxes. You do the same thing for x equal 2 and x equal 3. Every time you line up the curve, you line up the hairline, and fill in those boxes. Oftentimes, you have to eyeball it or round off your answers. Don't worry about it. Okay, I got my worksheet filled out. Now you get the final answer by adding all these values up vertically. Some of them have minus signs next to them, so those ones get subtracted. So I'll just add them up here. And finally, I get my equation. Looks like 3 minus 0.9x minus 1.12x squared plus 0.524x cubed. Or you could write it around this way if you like. And what was the true equation? Fold it back, and what do you know? It looks pretty close. Actually, I was hoping the numbers would be a bit closer than that. I got 1.12 for the x squared term when I should have gotten just 1. But in terms of the curve, actually, these are very close. Here, I graph my answer along with the original graph, and you can see they're almost exactly the same. As far as I'm aware, all of the original Gerber equimeters are gone today. In fact, I've never even seen a photograph of the thing. Dave Gerber's book has a diagram, which is mostly taken from the patent drawings, but no pictures of an actual working unit. It's not really a surprise that these things are all gone. The original was the size of a drafting table with a light built into it, so it's not the kind of thing that somebody's grandma just has lying around. Once everything moved to computers, this would have been the first thing to get tossed in the dumpster. It's just too big to keep. We gotta talk about how it works, right? Mathematically speaking, this thing is computing the coefficients of the Taylor and Fourier series of the function. Now, the way a typical student learns to compute Taylor and Fourier series is with calculus formulas that look like this. But you won't be able to use these formulas since they require you to know the derivatives and integrals of the functions, and those are really hard to find if all you've got is a graph. So forget about using calculus. Instead, Gerber used an approach based on some simple linear algebra. Like for the degree 3 polynomial, we need to figure out the coefficients, the a, b, c, d, in this formula here. That's four unknowns. Now, you can look on the graph and find four points and plug them each into the formula. And just for simplicity, let's use the points x equals 0, 1, 2, and 3. That gives us four corresponding y values. You can plug each of those points in to get four different equations. And now this is a system of equations that you can easily solve in terms of the y values. Like, just look at the second formula there. What this means is you can find b by multiplying each y value by those different numbers and then adding it all together. And this is actually what the equimeter is doing when you line up those curves. See, the equimeter is basically acting like an elaborate slide rule. The slide rule is a device for multiplication. If you use a logarithmic scale, you can multiply just by sliding by certain distances. Just look at the top two scales. Right now they're all lined up. One goes to one, two goes to two, right? And watch this. When I slide it a little bit, I slide this thing so now the one lines up with the two. And you can see every value on the top is being multiplied by two. See, one is lined up with two, three is with the six, four with the eight, right? If you slide it a little bit more, now everything's being multiplied by three. That's how the slide rule works. Now the equimeter scale is the same type of scale you'll see on a slide rule. And the indicators are lined up so that the A always tells you the actual Y value on the curve. See here the Y value is 10. The A indicator always tells you the actual Y value on the curve. And the B indicator always lines up with two times the actual Y value. And the C indicator always lines up with three times the Y value and so on. See when the A indicator is at 8, the B is at 16, which is 2 times 8. The C is at 24, which is 3 times 8. The D is at 32, which is 4 times 8, right? So when you line the equimeter up, what you're getting is a snapshot of all possible digits times the Y value on the curve. Anyway, we need to compute these formulas, which involve doing lots of multiplications and then adding everything together. If you look carefully at these formulas, you'll see what you see on the worksheet. Like 1.83. This is why you see A h c on the worksheet a is multiplication by one h is by eight and c is by three and they're offset in these little steps so they get one in the most significant digit then eight then three so when you're filling in the worksheet you're doing all these little multiplications and then you add up the columns you're doing all these additions that's smart
Gerber's original version is different from mine in some important ways. Generally, Gerber's is more complicated and more accurate. I try to make mine simple enough so that you can understand how it works, and of course mine is much smaller. Gerber's curve sheet look like this. It's basically the same as my curve sheet, only Gerber wraps the curve around five times. See, it just goes off to the right and starts again on the left at the same height. Since the horizontal scale is wrapping around the picture five times total, it means the scale markings can be five times more spread out. So without making the curve sheet too big, you get five times more resolution in the horizontal scale, which gives you much more accuracy. And then the scale sheet has the same kind of five times wrapping around. The indicators, which on mine is just a row of readouts, becomes a much more complicated array of readouts. You have to read the correct one according to which branch of the wraparound you're on. So overall, Gerber's design is a bit harder to use, but if you do it right, your answer will be a lot more accurate. Gerber's equimeter also had a variable scale built right into it. This didn't really do much, it just made it easy to mark off equally spaced points on the graph. Overall, mine works pretty well, though it takes a long time to get your answer. Here I'm going to try a degree 2 Fourier approximation. Start the clock! In the book I learned that Gerber actually invented this thing when he was still a student at RPI. Just like his variable scale, Gerber came up with the basic idea to save work on boring homework problems. His son David has notebooks from 1945 describing the idea, a long time before he patented it in 1959. In the notebooks, Joe called it the Equation Finder. Now that's a perfect name. Why do you have to go change it to something unpronounceable? Make me tweet your son 80 years later. All right, I guess I'm done. It took me almost 15 minutes. It's a shame this thing is more or less forgotten today, though it's not really surprising. It's a bit unwieldy, and a typical person is going to have a hard time even understanding what it does. And anyway, science as a whole has simply moved on from the era of graphical computing. Things like the equimeter don't exist anymore because nobody needs them. Nowadays, data is collected and stored digitally. You could print it out if you wanted to, but the real information isn't on the picture, it's in the computer. And that same computer can be used to analyze it much better than any instrument on paper. Joe Gerber spent his entire early career inventing graphical computing devices and built a whole company around them. Every one of his inventions was useful and interesting, but in hindsight we can see what a dead end they all were, what with computers coming to change everything. What's remarkable to me is that Joe Gerber saw it too. He knew that computers would render all his little gadgets totally useless within a few decades. Instead of running the other way, he transformed his business completely into a computerized manufacturing company which still exists today. Way to stay relevant, Joe. Tell your son to respond to my tweet.